Okay, I want to talk about this um, transatlantic rift over the leaked um, correspondence by Sir Kim Derrick uh, regarding the Trump administration. Uh, this pertained to say that uh, Sir Kim thought that the US, the current US administration, was inept and um, dysfunctional, and there was personal criticism of Donald Trump. Now, if you look at this purely from a point of view of personal opinions, uh, you might argue that's undiplomatic to do. On the other hand, there is a very um, valid case to be made that the job of ambassadors, the job of senior diplomats, is to give honest and candid feedback to the office in which they serve, in which case the Foreign Office, in this case the Foreign Office. So if ambassadors cannot do that, if they cannot give a clear assessment of what they think is going on in the country they're based in, then they can't do their job. So this leaker or leakers, um, I don't know what their agenda is. I don't know if they're trying to put a wedge in the special relationship, if they are trying to aid Donald Trump. It might even be, and this hasn't been raised so far, it might even be a third party. I would not rule out some sort of um, infiltration by um, Russian or Chinese operatives. I would not rule that out. Um, but that will, of course, be uh, heat on the Foreign Office to investigate their, you know, how this happened, how do these leaks happen. So, um, that's that. Uh, what did he say? He said that he thinks Trump is dysfunctional and inept. Well, given the number of cabinet resignations has been from Trump White House in a relatively short period of time, compared to other presidents at this point, certainly there appears to be significant lack of trust with Mr. Trump's colleagues and him. There has been significant tensions. I mean, OK, you could argue that happens with every president. But I cannot think of any president, including Richard Nixon, who was so thin skinned, so paranoid and so prone to lash out. How did Trump respond to this? He called um, Sir Kim wacky, a very stupid guy and a pompous fool. So some will say, OK, well, he gave as good as he got. But he has also attacked Theresa May. And this is exactly what he said regarding Theresa May in a tweet. Theresa May, mind, not the ambassador. You know, this was an attack on our Prime Minister. Whatever you think of May's handling of Brexit, and I know she has plenty of British critics, she won't go down as a great Prime Minister. But let me just read this out. This is what Donald Trump, let's get into the article, if you just bear with me a second. I get to the right point here. Probably should have prepared this in advance, but there you go. <sighs> I actually taken a picture of the tweet just so I could quote it directly. Here we go. Thank you for the wait. I have been very critical about the way the UK and Prime Minister Theresa May handle Brexit. What a mess she and her representatives have created. So that's not just an attack on May, that's an attack on the entire British government, basically. Um, I told her how it should be done. I told her how it should be done. But she decided to go another way. I do not know the ambassador, but he is not very well liked or thought of within the US. Well, that's debatable. Uh, Sir Kim had held over a hundred um, uh, informal and formal um, events in his residence every year. From what I gather, he was pretty well respected with um, his American hosts. So this notion, it, it's entirely a thing with Trump. I mean, here's... Uh, CNN was interviewing some people. Okay, CNN, say what you want, but... Uh, Lou Lukens, former American ambassador to the UK, he didn't come out and 
outright support uh, Sir Kim, but he did say that, you know, I guess he was empathising as a diplomat. He was saying, this leak is going to make it harder for diplomats, British diplomats around the world to do their job. And he's right, it will. So last night, the Prime Ministerial debate, I'm going to be speaking about that in more detail. I didn't actually watch it. I, I didn't realise it was last night. So I'm going to get around to watching that after this, but uh, online. But Johnson, Johnson's approach was perfect. On several occasions, he had the opportunity to defend Sir Kim, and he didn't. It's very obvious that Johnson, just like Nigel Farage, wants to be a PR man for Trump. He wants to be subservient to Trump. Now, Jeremy Hunt has um, has emphasised the importance of the special relationship. When Trump arrived in the UK, he actually shared criticism of Donald Trump's criticism of Sadiq Khan. Okay, so no one can say that Jeremy Hunt is a big critic of Trump, but he done the right thing. He stood by the ambassador and he also criticised Trump's shameful attack on Theresa May and his attack on Sir Kim Derrick. Uh, according to Jeremy Hunt, Jeremy Hunt accused the US president of being disrespectful and wrong. Good. I think Hunt is showing far more statesmanship over this, among other things, than Boris Johnson is. Unfortunately, two things are unfortunate. Number one, Johnson's probably going to become our next prime minister. Number two, Trump's probably going to get re-elected in 2020. So we're going to have to deal with Trump for another um, two, uh, excuse me, five and a half years, potentially. Um, we should not be in a rush to make any more invites to state visits if Trump keeps thinking he can insult um, senior British politicians and diplomats this way. I mean, you could say it was just Trump getting kind of, oh, well, he gave as good as he got with Sir Kim Darrick. But here's the point. If you're an American Trump supporter, Kim Darrick didn't say anything that American media networks and many American politicians have said. Even Republicans who are critical of Trump have been have expressed the dysfunctional nature of his administration, the dysfunctional nature of this president. I honestly think the current situation in America isn't Democrat versus Republican, although that certainly exists. It's Democrat versus Republican versus the Trump faction. This is a president who is a law unto himself. This is a president, the baby in chief, who is so thin skinned that he will simply lash out. He, he has no self-control. Trump has no self-control. Bloody awful president, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. You can disagree if you want, but as a Briton, I do feel pissed off that you have an American president making such an attack on the British Prime Minister and British Brexiteers in their tunnel vision, in their small-minded attitude, seem to think that defending the likes of Trump is more important than seeing the bigger picture here, which is an attack, an insult to the head of our government. I mean... OK, May is not going to go down as a great prime minister, but to publicly criticise her, her in that way, to insinuate that she should take his diktat on Brexit. What Trump should have said if he thought she was handling it badly, you know, raise that in private. Raise it in private meetings like, look, Theresa, I would suggest you do this another way. But what the hell gives Trump a right to dictate the British prime ministers how to handle our affairs? That's essentially what he's doing. I mean, imagine Theresa May turned around and said, Donald, I don't like the way you're handling the gun issue or another sensitive American issue, say abortion or something else. You know, a lot of Americans would not like that. So it's the same principle. Um, Johnson was right about one thing. The leaker should be punished. That is absolutely disgraceful. I don't know what they thought they were going to achieve. I mean... Wherever you think, whether you agree or disagree with Sir Kim Darrick's assessment, that was an honest personal assessment, and it was made in discretion, or so he thought. So there's a few things here. Clearly, they need to check security breaches. You know, that's going to need to be reviewed. Um, the latest news is he's resigned, unfortunately, because the pressure that he and his family will be under will make it impossible for him to do his job. And Trump, no doubt, will be, you know on the war path to try and make life as difficult as possible for him. Um, will this damage the special relationship? I think it will to some extent. It's hard to see it not doing that. 
But I do believe that the British-American relationship goes much deeper than any incumbent. Um, you know, it's bigger than Trump. It is bigger than Trump. And that's what people need to realise. On both sides of the Atlantic, it's also bigger than May. It's bigger than any prime minister or any president. Um, of course, there's been testing moments in the past. I'm not going to pretend it's always been perfect, but it is a strong relationship. But what we cannot do is basically kowtow to the American president, definitely not Trump, but not any American president. Um, America's a powerful country, far more powerful than the United Kingdom. But we have to be um, a nation that can stand on on our own two feet. If Brexit is really about taking back control, we need to show that we're prepared to speak up against allies as well um, when we think that they're wrong. Um, And this is pretty much in keeping with Trump, you know, to lash out at allies in this way as he has with May and yet basically groveled at dictators like Putin and Kim Jong-un. Absolutely disgraceful how Trump has denigrated Western institutions to the extent that he has. Even if you go with the view that they've denigrated themselves to an extent, the way Trump has so publicly vilified Western institutions is a disgrace. Um, I mean, this man is a liability as far as I'm concerned for Western stability, not just American stability, for Western stability. He's an absolute liability. Um, As for Nigel Farage, yeah, well, he's just Trump's PR man, isn't he? Um, In the end of the day, diplomats, ambassadors need to have the confidence to be able to give a candid assessment. If this is a fallout, from a candid assessment um, in the context of an ally country, a country we are very close to. Imagine the situation, say, the ambassador to China or the ambassador to Russia would be under. I don't even know if we have a diplomatic presence in Moscow right now. don't think we do. But imagine if this is the situation we're going to have regarding the leak with an ally country. Imagine the, the pressure ambassadors are going to be feeling that they cannot give an honest assessment in a country that we have difficult relations with, it it won't give them much confidence. So definitely the leaker needs to be identified. Um, But consider this, Sir Kim Darek is a diplomat of 30 years experience. So to those Brexiteers who are defending Trump, do you really think that this is a case of, oh, Sir Kim Darek is uh, being reckless or is the problem actually in Donald Trump? I mean, It could be argued, I think, very validly that everything he said, Trump is just vindicating with his response. You know, this is not the response of a rational person. Um, That's that. That's the situation. But this is not uh, an issue with America. This is an issue with Donald Trump. Okay, so this is not Britain versus America. Let's not look at it that way because it isn't that. It will cause some damage. Because Trump is head of state, so it's inevitably going to cause some tensions. But if Boris Johnson is simply going to be a lapdog to Washington, if he's simply going to give Trump anything he wants, if he's simply going to be subservient, Trump's frequently praised Johnson. That concerns me because it makes me think that Johnson isn't going to say when he does disagree with Trump. I mean, even Thatcher and Reagan had disagreements. And Thatcher didn't hold back from saying so. Will Boris, will Boris Johnson, time will tell.